Every year, I always share my testimony and I talk about uh, the struggles and uh, with the previous season and what I learned. Um, and this year's topic is very special to me. It's always something that I always a little bit scared to get into, um, but I don't know how many more seasons of basketball I have left. So I definitely want to take this time to talk about uh, anxiety and specifically for me, um, my battle with pregame anxiety. Um, what I've kind of learned through my battle with anxiety is, is really three main points. One, if you struggle with anxiety, you are definitely not alone. Uh, two, anxiety does not define who you are. And three, sometimes your anxiety won't go away, but that's okay. So what is the definition of anxiety? Anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Anxiety essentially is fear. Fear of something happening or fear of something not happening. So that leads me to my first point. If you experience anxiety, you are definitely not alone. For me, uh, my anxiety always centers around my need and my desire to try and control. I'm trying to control something, I'm trying to control someone, I'm trying to control an outcome or a result. And the two main catalysts uh, every time I struggle with pregame anxiety, is it's really around two things. Number one, um, I'm afraid of letting someone down. That could be you know, the fans, it could be my teammates or my coaches, or it could even be myself. The second thing, the second catalyst that I really struggle with is trying to avoid this worst case scenario. You know, to me, the worst case scenario is we lose the game and I play bad. And I, I think about, you know, oh, if, if that happens, it's gonna be a horrible night. I'm not gonna be able to sleep well. I'm gonna be thinking about the game over and over and over again. And so uh, those two things are, are the main catalyst for why I struggle and, and have a lot of anxiety before games. The truth is I didn't always struggle with pregame anxiety. Uh, my whole life, I was always this underdog. Nobody expected anything of me. Every time I showed up at a gym, um, you know, everybody thought I couldn't play. And so I, I would just thrive in this chip on my shoulder underdog role. And I was always just surprising people. And I was always better than their expectations. And so I learned how to function like this. I mean, I was able to be successful. It got me through basically all the way up until college. But once I made the NBA, I signed with the Warriors, all of a sudden I got put into a new situation where all of a sudden I had fans. I had people who knew who I was, who expected something of me, people who put pressure on me. Um, and, and all of a sudden I was in a position that I had never really experienced in my whole life where every time I stepped on the floor, people were expecting a lot out of me. And I basically just had no idea how to handle it. Um, I didn't know how to handle the pressure. And that's when my pregame anxiety really started to surface. And it hit me uh, in, in really, really severe ways, especially early in my career. And there, for a lot of us, anxiety is often unexpected. Um, we don't know when it's going to come. And when we feel like we're trying to accomplish something or we're trying to achieve a goal or we're trying to blaze a new trail, um, the cost of that, the expectation of that, the burden and the pressure of that is, is heavy. It, it's tremendous because you don't want to let other people down and you don't want to let yourself down. I just want to take a, a quick moment to kind of talk through the history of my pregame anxiety because it wasn't something that I always struggled with my whole life, but it is something I struggled with my entire professional career. So I remember uh, when I was with the Warriors, I was always at the end of the bench and um, I would literally be there as we're going into the third quarter and the fourth quarter, I would just be like praying and sweating. Like, I really hope we don't win or lose by 20 because if we win or lose by 20, then they're gonna put me into the game. Every time I got subbed into the game, Oracle Arena, all the fans would give me a standing ovation. And I remember that would just, you know, spike my anxiety. Um, and, and so I was always trying to avoid this scenario. And, and it was so sad because I, I spent my whole life dreaming and hoping that I can make the NBA. And finally, when I made the NBA, I was just sitting on the end of the bench, praying that I wouldn't get subbed into the game because I was so afraid of letting people down. And I remember, uh, you know, I was struggling and, and the Warriors, they sent me to the developmental league, the D league at the time. And that's when my anxiety, like, was the worst it's ever been in my whole life. Um, I, I'm saying it was the day before a game, I, I was a mess. Um, the day of the game, you know, before the game, I, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't take a nap. Literally every game in the D-League, every game, I had to have a two-hour conversation with my agent, Roger Montgomery, 
and he would just affirm me, encourage me, he would give me reminders, but I couldn't like play the game without these two hour conversations. Because if I didn't have that, I would just overthink and be so far into my own thoughts and the anxiety would just absolutely, absolutely, you know, destroy me. And I remember, um, you know, that, that rookie season, uh, not only was it difficult playing and adjusting to the NBA, um, but emotionally, it was the most taxing year that I had ever been through um, because of the pregame anxiety. And so as I got into my second year um, and, and when I got picked up by the Knicks, I was literally at a place in my life where it was like my back was against the wall and it was either I perform or I'm about to get cut and my NBA dream is over. And I started to figure out how do I let go of the expectations of others? How do I just play my game? And it was literally desperation um, and, and, and in terms of like, this is it, I'm on my last game and if, if I don't play well here, I'm gonna get cut. And so I was able to figure out how do I like remove what everybody else thinks about me and just go and play my, my style of basketball. And so I started doing that. Uh, we had the Linsanity run and, and that was a huge breakthrough for me. But maybe like three weeks in, uh, into Linsanity, I, I remember we were about to play the Chicago Bulls. Um, and, and at that time it was MVP Derrick Rose. And all of a sudden my pregame anxiety just comes back with a vengeance. And, and I'm just in my hotel room. I, I can't really take my pregame nap. I have no appetite. I'm shaking. I vividly remember in that moment that I was so scared of letting down all these fans. And, and obviously like after Linsanity, there was this stretch where there was so much fanfare. And in the beginning, it was okay, but at a certain point, it started to really, really put too much pressure on me and I didn't know how to handle it. And, and that's when the pregame anxiety, you know, went, went up a big amount again. And it was almost like I was back in the D-League. Fast forward to my third season with the Rockets and into my fourth season with the Rockets, there's a, a one specific playoff game where um, at the very end of the game, I had a crucial turnover. Uh, and because I had the turnover, we lost the game. And I remember going back, um, at this time we were in Portland playing the Trailblazers, and I remember going back to my hotel room and I was so disappointed, uh, disappointed in myself for letting everybody down, for letting Houston down. Um, and, and I remember uh, I kept telling myself, don't sign on to your social media. You know, don't, don't go look at the comments. But I couldn't like stop myself and I was like, I just need to. I just need to. And so I went on my, my, my social media and it was just, so much hate and I remember I would just you know put a screen down to to reload you know upload and it was like I kept doing that every two seconds I would upload and there'd be another like whole new page of just comments constantly going in every platform that I was on just same thing uh, upload reload more 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 and, and and there was some stuff where you know it's like oh you suck or or you know you should never play basketball again and, and those types of things but then there's even you know other stuff about race and 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 racism and you know a lot of derogatory comments around race and then there's even other ones that were you know talking about my worth and uh, whether I deserve to live or whether I should die or um, things like that and, and I just remember that feeling um, it, it, it was so vivid and it was so traumatic for me when I think about before games, um, like why I struggle with pregame anxiety, a lot of it also comes back to that moment or that game where I remember that experience and I was like, I really don't want to go through that this game. And, and so oftentimes I think about like, oh, I remember back in, the, in these situations, this is how I felt. I couldn't sleep at all the whole night. I remember I was getting a lot of hate and, and that has given me anxiety before games to really try to, at all costs, avoid having to relive that scenario. Um, by the time that I continued to go to the next season with the Lakers, um, basically my strategy was, I'm gonna try to be asleep for as long as I can because if I'm awake, this pregame anxiety is going to uh, continue to just eat at me. And, and so uh, it got to the point where I kind of shifted my, my sleep schedule and I was taking four to four and a half hour naps before games. Um, and that was my way of kind of coping with the anxiety. If I can just, you know, sleep, uh, be tired and I can just take a huge nap before the game, uh, maybe I won't have so many thoughts before the game. Maybe I won't just be circling through my head and spiraling um, and, and going down different rabbit holes of what might happen today. And, you know, as I started to go through that process, uh, you know, I eventually got 
to the Hornets. And it wasn't until my sixth season in the NBA where I really feel like I had a breakthrough with my pregame anxiety. And I was like, okay, you know, it's not zero out of 10, right? Like it's not completely gone, but at least I'm able to manage it. And it's, it went from a 10 out of 10 in the D League and I'm able to kind of bring it down to a five out of 10 or a four out of 10 to a three out of 10. And I was like, okay, I have a pretty good handle on my pregame anxiety. And uh, you know, it was like that for a few years. But after my nine years in the NBA, as I went to the CBA, um, I remember that first game in the CBA with the Beijing Ducks. All of a sudden it felt like I was in this new place. Like, okay, now I'm playing basketball in the CBA. I just finished in the NBA. If I come to the CBA and I don't play well, I'm going to let everybody down. Everybody down. It'll be my first time ever playing a game in the CBA. And I've had so many diehard loyal fans who have supported me for almost a decade now, and I need to show out for them. And before that first game in the CBA, I would remember I woke up from my pregame nap, I tried to stand up, and I was so overcome by the anxiety that my body just like, I couldn't stand and I just toppled over back onto my bed and I was in a fetal position and I was just shaking right there and I was like, you know, I couldn't control myself. I had no energy to even stand up. And I was just laying there until kind of the anxiety would subside a little bit. Um, but that's kind of how bad it was. And, and I struggled with that pregame anxiety, you know, through a lot of my CBA career. It was definitely not an easy thing to kind of go through a few years where I felt like I was doing well and all of a sudden it coming back and, and coming back pretty hard. And, you know, that kind of led me to all the way until uh, last season when I was with the new Taipei Kings. You know, my anxiety, it was inconsistent. You know, during some pretty important games, it was like at a six out of 10. During a lot of the regular season, maybe I could get it down to like a four out of 10. Um, but what really surprised me was the playoffs. When I got, when we got around to the playoffs, that first game of the playoffs, uh, my anxiety was maybe eight out of 10, nine out of 10, just very, very high. I hadn't experienced that amount of anxiety in a few years um, since my first game with, with the Beijing Ducks. Um, but that really, really caught me by surprise. You know, I remember uh, I was talking to uh, Phil Chen, who is the CEO of the New Taipei Kings. And, and he asked me a question early in the season. He's like, you struggle with pregame anxiety? I was like, yeah, it's been a battle for my whole professional career. And he's like, you've had so many good games. You've had so many good stats. You've played against so many great players in so many clutch situations. And yet you still struggle with pregame anxiety. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't know why. Obviously I wish I didn't have to deal with this. I wish I didn't struggle with this. But the reality is it almost seems like sometimes even the better I play, the more anxiety I have because I feel like I have to reproduce that. Or the better I play, the bigger the expectations and the bigger the expectations, the more anxiety I have before games to try to, you know, live up to the hype. And, you know, as I had more conversations around my pregame anxiety, um, you know, I started to process more. I started to really understand pregame anxiety is easily the one thing that cuts away the most at my enjoyment of professional basketball. Um, there are times when at its worst with my pregame anxiety, um, I just wish I didn't play basketball anymore. That, that I, I wish, you know, I think to myself sometimes like, man, like you're, you know, you just finished your 14th year of professional basketball. Why are you still dealing with this? Why don't you just retire and not deal with it? And obviously retirement, that's not the only factor that goes into retirement, but I will say in its worst moments, pregame anxiety does actually have me thinking a lot about, should I retire and just not have to deal with the pregame anxiety anymore? And so hopefully through me sharing my experience, um, that kind of wraps up the first point, um, which is if you experience anxiety, um, I just want you to know you're not alone. Um, there are a lot of people that are struggling with anxiety, including me. Um, and the more that we understand that we're not alone, um, I think the more strength we'll have to fight through it. Uh, the, the second point um, that I've kind of really learned this past season is that anxiety does not define you. Um, anxiety does not define me. You know, there are ways that I have learned to manage it. You know, I have mentors, uh, I have a therapist, I have a sports psychologist, um, and, and I've gotten a lot of professional help around it. And, and there's many things you can do. Um, I have a lot of different exercises from breathing to affirmations, uh, meditation, visualization, EMDR. These are all great things that have helped me. Um, but to me, the, the, the thing that really has helped me the most uh, is my faith. And, and through faith, it's remembering certain truths and it's really trusting in and resting in uh, God's promises. 
I remember uh, going back to the Hornets season, like what allowed me to kind of make a, a breakthrough um, of some sort with pregame anxiety. Uh, Roger Montgomery, he, he said to me, I want you, he said, I want you to write down your top fears as it relates to basketball. Whenever you're kind of going through something before a game, what are your top fears? And so I wrote them down uh, very specifically and he said, I want you to find one scripture for each one of those fears. So whenever you notice or identify like, oh, I'm really struggling with this fear, I can go and I can, and I can lean on that one scripture and that one promise. One of my top fears is I'm gonna have a bad game. I'm not gonna play well. I'm gonna, you know, uh, basically just have a really bad performance. And, and the verse that I chose was uh, Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And I think the, the emphasis here is we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. But the key is that God prepared in advance. He prepared in advance for what we're going to do. And, and so for me, it, it really took a lot of pressure. And, and I lean on this verse a lot. It takes a lot of pressure where it's like, man, if, if I'm going to score two points and that's what was prepared, then I'm only going to score two points. If I'm going to score 20 points, then I'm gonna score 20 points. It doesn't matter how hard I stress, it doesn't matter how much I worry, it doesn't how much, matter how much I try to control. The end result is the end result. What I can control is my effort, my attitude, and how much I'm going to enjoy that game and that day. Let's say I score 10 points. I, I can go through that game filled with anxiety and worry and stress, and I can hate that whole process, um, or I can score 10 points and I can be free, I can be light, and I can be joyful. It's so easy to say, oh, just be free and light and joyful. It's super hard for me to actually apply that. But that is something that I lean on is, hey, whatever's gonna happen today is supposed to happen. And I can just sit back, I can rest. Um, as long as I give my best preparation, as long as I give my best effort, um, I, can, I can live with the results. And, and so that's a verse that's helped me a lot. Another verse that's really helped me, you know, I had a, f I've, I have a fear because you know I've, I've experienced this multiple times in my career. Um, I have a fear of kind of being replaced, right? Like somebody better comes along or, or I get hurt or something and I realize all of a sudden the team doesn't need me and I get replaced. And so that's one of my fears. Um, and, and the verse I go to is Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I remember thinking, you know, many times before games, like, hey, if I get benched and I go to the bench, the Lord is with me, even on the bench. He's, he's gonna be next to me, he's gonna give me comfort. Um, if I get injured and I go uh, to, you know, the IR or go to the hospital and have to get MRIs or whatever, like, it doesn't matter where I go. I, there's nowhere in the world that God won't be going with me to and that's given me a lot of comfort. It doesn't guarantee a successful result. It doesn't guarantee that I get what I want, but it does guarantee that I'm not alone and that God is always with me by my side. And that's a verse that I lean on a lot. And then another fear that I really have is, what is the end result gonna be? Are we gonna win or are we gonna lose? And that causes so much anxiety for me because as a competitor, I always wanna win and I wanna win every game. Uh, a verse that I go to, is Proverbs 16.3. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. And uh, to me, that's just uh, such a great reminder that the one thing I can control is whether I commit my work, whether I commit my game and, and my effort to the Lord. And if I do that, He will establish my plans. And so I don't have to stress and try to control a win because the truth is I can't control whether we win or lose. I can control my effort, I control those things, but I can't actually will our team to win because if I had that ability to do that, then I would do that every single game and we would never lose. But I'm not actually in control of the end result. I'm not even in control if I stay healthy through the game. I'm not in control of the refs. I'm not even in control if my shot goes in. I can shoot hundreds of thousands of shots in preparation, but when I shoot those shots in the games, I don't have control whether they go in. I can only do my best to shoot it confidently and hope that they go in. And that's just a reality. And so as long as I commit my work to the Lord, that end result, I can really give to Him because He's going to establish my plans. So these are just a few ways um, where faith has really helped ground me uh, when I start to spiral and when I start to overthink. And when anxiety comes my way, I just remind myself like, I'm not defined by my anxiety and I am much more than my anxiety. 
I mean, those are some important truths that I really have to remind myself. And uh, so, so that closes my second point, and that leads me to my last and final point. Um, anxiety does not always go away, and that's okay. The first few years in the NBA, uh, I always thought to myself, hey, this is just short term. You're gonna figure it out, and one day you won't have any anxiety. You're gonna kind of go back to how it was before, you know, like when I was growing up, no anxiety. And I would think, hey, it's just a matter of time before I figure it out. Um, but what I realized was that's often an oversimplification. You know, I think a lot of people who have anxiety, we would love to just remove it if possible and, oh yeah, one day it'll be gone. And I'm not saying that that's not possible. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen to people because it does. I'm not saying that God couldn't heal me miraculously and remove it forever because he can. But also the reality with me, my journey and my story is that after 14 years of professional basketball, uh, my pregame anxiety has not gone away and uh, it is still a very present part of who I am and a big part of my journey. You know, I'm reminded of Paul when he talks about a thorn in his flesh and, and how um, he has a thorn in his flesh, but even through that, um, Christ is sufficient for him and, and is strong enough. And, and that's how I feel is, yes, I struggle with pregame anxiety, um, but at the same time, you know, I have Christ who is able to give me strength in my weakness and to help guide me through it uh, and so it's not always something where it's like oh I must remove it all um, it's learning how to manage it and, and that's where I'm at right now in my career you know to draw an analogy uh, if I'm a boat out at sea um, I would love to never experience any winds or waves and just be smooth sailing um, but I think in my life in your life um, that's never going to be the case and um, anxiety is uh, one of those winds or those waves who are going to come and they're going to rock the boat. And I need to, you know, not always feel like, okay, like, when am I going to live a career where I have no winds and waves, uh, no anxiety, um, but it's really, how do I lean into my faith? How do I lean into the exercises and the breathing and the different affirmations that I believe in so that I'm anchored um, and I'm anchored to, to, to the ground and even as these winds and waves come, there's going to be some rock, rocking and there's going to be um, some disruption, but I'm still anchored to the ground and that's going to keep me there standing tall. Uh, and so, you know, I really try to uh, lean into my faith as, as an anchor. So I've been talking a lot about the pressure and the anxiety that I feel before games uh, with the sports psychologist. And, and the sports psychologist gave me a, a really good um, quote from a former NBA player. Um, and this player said, what you call pressure, I call joy. It feels like I'm going to piss my pants, my mind is racing, my heart is pounding, my palms are sweaty. But that is joy because when I feel that, I know I'm about to go play hoops and I absolutely love that. And so he's redefined this pressure and the anxiety that he feels um, as joy. It, it's this feeling that he gets when he knows he's about to go out there, do his thing, um, do what he's talented at, do what he's called to do. Um, and, and, and how do we lean into, lean into that rather than try to run away from it or avoid it? Um, and, and so leaning into the discomfort and leaning into kind of that pressure and that anxiety um, allows me to be able to be okay with it and to be able to work through it and to really almost use it as a way to help me. Like, like when I feel that, I know it's time to go hoop. I know it's time to go cook and and that's just you know something that I've been trying to work at as well and I'm a work in progress I'm gonna keep working at it um, but again these are just some things that I've been learning and hopefully it's it's uh, relatable and helpful to you and the last thing I really just try to focus on is God's unconditional love and, and unconditional love is such a vague concept for me as a human it's, it's something I can't fully understand because I don't really truly have unconditional perfect love um, but it is something that God gives to me and so me trying to understand that and know that there's nothing I can or can't do that will make God not love me um, just how secure my identity is in God I think is something that's so important and when I'm able to really focus and lean into that and remember that I am a son of God first and foremost it's, it's, it allows me to be able to um, have a different view it's a, it allows me to calm down um, to be secure and to not play from a place of insecurity um, but to play from a place of security and abundance and 
Um, I think that's something that, you know, uh, I have to daily remind myself, otherwise I forget. And so um, one thing that I've learned through my anxiety is if I'm listening to myself, uh, I naturally have a lot of negative self-talk. Um, I, I have a lot of doubts, fears, um, and, and worries. Um, and so one thing I've learned through my anxiety is um, instead of listening to myself, I can start talking to myself. Um, how do I repeat some of God's promises? Or how do I repeat some of the affirmations or things that I believe in? And so um, talking to myself instead of listening to myself has been a, a big game, game changer for me as well when it comes to anxiety. And so to wrap things up in conclusion, uh, number one, for those of you experiencing anxiety, I see you and I empathize with you. Um, you're not alone. Uh, number two, anxiety is a part of my life, a part of your life maybe, um, but it's not who we are. Uh, I encourage you to seek out therapy or to ground yourself in the truth of your value and worth as a human being or to open up to a friend or a mentor. Um, and number three, anxiety might never go away, um, but we can learn how to live with it, how to function with it, and we can even learn how to reframe it and to be able to use it as a resource and a strength. And we can even learn how to reframe it and to use it uh, for our good. So thank you all for taking the time to listen.